So now we have our search field and our drop down menu in place. We just need to hook up the JavaScript to make these things work, as well as the toggle for our responsive nav bar. So let's set up that. If we go down to the bottom of our file, you'll see we've got the legacy links that were left over from the documentation setup that this sample file was a part of. So we're going to update these. I'm going to take and just uh, strip out these links, except for that first one, the jQuery one. We'll leave that and work with it. In our case, what we're going to do, let me add a few more returns to bring this up on the screen. There we go. Um, we're going to take and link to a local version of jQuery. And if you've not done that before, you can go out to jQuery.com. It's very easy. And here's their page. And if you click on download jQuery, and I'm going to get the production version, which will be minified. I'm going to click on that. and I can just save that directly. I'm just clicking Command S or Control S on a PC. And I'm going to save that to my folder. I've already got a version of it saved here, so I don't need to save it now. Once I've got that downloaded, then I can simply link to it. So in the files I provided you today, you're going to find this file. And I like to just go ahead and double click on that and select all of it and get that full file name. I do prefer to know what version of jQuery I'm using, and so that's why I tend to keep the full file name in place. So I'm going to update my link. This is the correct folder. It's in the JS folder. I'm just going to update the link to that file. So that's a start, but it doesn't get us there yet because we need to add Bootstrap's plugin. So I'm going to copy that script line. I'm going to now link to the minified version of the compiled Bootstrap plugins, which came with the download from their main page. You'll see that's uh, bootstrap min.js. And so I'm going to select all that and copy it. Place that link here. And that should be all it takes to get us rolling. So now I'm going to go to my page and refresh. I'm going to see if that drop down works. If we had the right class structure, this automatically works. That's how it's geared to work. The class structure that we put in the HTML is what makes that link up appropriately. And because collapse is also included in that set of plugins, our collapsible responsive navigation works as well. So let me just show you a little bit more about what I've got in here for you. In this slide, I've got uh, a sample page where I've got notes regarding setup, so that if you would like a little bit of help or some further notes on setting up the head section of your document, or perhaps an alternative way to set up your CSS with a parent style sheet that imports the bootstrap styles, as I've done in these particular two pages, um, or setting up your JavaScript down at the bottom, I've got notes there. And over on the page, navbar examples, I've got some further notes about setting up your navbar. On this page, you can see then further notes about setting up the fixed navbar across the top, including some more extensive markup to include drop downs and pulled right elements, those types of things. And then CSS notes and JavaScript notes here under the tabs. Notice under JavaScript that I've included. Um, a note about what you'd do if you wanted to do it the way the folks at HTML5 Boilerplate recommend, where you go out to the Google um, Content Delivery Network and pull down their version, and then offer a local version as a fallback if you'd like to do that. Then I've got an example of a static full width nav bar, including ways to adjust it for versions 2.0 or 2.1 or 2.02 of Twitter Bootstrap. And then at bottom, if you'd like to have a version of the nav bar that fits within the container, here's how to set that up with a few notes on managing details there. So I hope that's handy to you. Enjoy it, and I hope to see you soon. We'll be talking next, I think, about tabs and pills. We'll see you then.